What is up YouTube and welcome to this combo video. So we will be discussing the Flash War and also as well brand new characters coming to the new season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So please do let me know in the comments below if you enjoy these combo videos. I have quite a lot of stuff I love to cover because well I like to talk about and watch and read a lot of stuff and well i have no one else to talk to about it so yeah you guys are like the my friends of course all of you all you lovely people so let me know if you do enjoy these combo videos as well which i've started doing so i can cover just a bit more stuff for you lovely lovely people so as well i'm doing a q a this weekend for my 10,000 subscribers special so please do drop some comments below it i'll, I'll just i will be covering all of your try and try i'll try and answer all of the comments there below that you hopefully will leave for me but first of all we have the flash war so the flash war is coming and it promises to be one of the biggest stories of 2018 now obviously we got the return of a wally west the flash in dc rebirth which then made it an awkward thing because we also have a another wally west in the storyline as well of the current flash timeline and we've also got barry allen who is our main flash once more obviously he he has been the main flash since new 52 but we've got now three flashes in reality we've got wally a pre-crisis a pre-new 52 a pre-everything version of Wally West who remembers absolutely everything that came before him in the history of DC Comics. We've also got the modern day version of Wally West which is also the Wally West which has been used over on the Flash TV show. And like I said, we've got Barry Allen. Now this Flash War is supposed to, supposed to tease us and give us the answer here for who... For once and all, is the real Flash? Who is the strongest Flash? To me, it's it's Barry Allen. <laughs> I've always preferred Barry Allen, but I did like I, I like the Wally West storylines personally. But uh, you know what? I like them both. I don't really like the new Wally West, to be honest. I liked him in Team Defiance, but really that was it. Now, in the what is going to happen here is that Wally West will be absolutely confused as to what he should do next obviously he's been living his life over in titans and what this will what will happen here is wally west will be absolutely confused as to whether he should let iris west know if he is alive or not so he will be wrestling with his guilt over whether he should let his family member know if he is still alive but Magenta, the old love of poor old Wally West, comes home to Keystone City and he is confronted with violent memories of an unknown world. And Williamson, the dude who is writing this, said that let's see who's the best Flash. Is it Barry or is it Wally? So this is going to be a hell of a lot of fun, to be honest here. And the synopsis actually reads this. Flash War Prelude, the biggest Flash story of 2018 starts here with a special story starring the classic Wally West who's conflicted over whether to let Iris West know he is alive and he'll need the help of the Flash to figure out what to do. But when Magenta, Wally's old love, needs his help, the Flash returns home to Keystone City where he's confronted with violent memories of an unknown world, a major turning point for the Flash family that sets the path for earth shattering stories in 2018 so 2018 is looking like it's gonna be one hell of a year for the flash family and joshua williamson has actually posted on twitter on november the 2nd which is when i have recorded this a hell of a lot of absolutely classic flash storylines right from the flash omnibus over to flashpoint on to DC Rebirth. So there's a lot here. And he says that the stack of books I need to read for Flash War references. Took a few books out of the picture. Because they might spoil too much of the story. So yeah. What what could he have actually referenced there? To be honest. Possibly it could actually be 
maybe the Jeff Johns era of Wally West, which when he was so incredibly prominent and things like that. But I think that this is going to open up a world where we finally learn which is the best Flash, and will we? Ha- will they answer the question of will we have one Flash from now on? What will happen to the pre DC Rebirth Wally West? Because obviously that all of his mysteries are leading over into Doomsday Clock, which is coming out later this month. Now, the question is, what will happen? I really am a bit worried about this, to be honest. I want the Barry Allen that we've had for New 52 and DC Rebirth to stick around because, well, I really, really like him. But Wally West has been really, really fun in Titans as well. So time will only tell where this is actually going to go. And Marvel seem to be obsessed with having multiple different versions of their characters. And maybe DC can allow it just this once that we can have multiple versions of the characters here. But this Flash War looks really, really awesome. And I'm super excited to see where this will actually go. And it's looking to be like something which is going to be a real treat. Obviously, the spin out of all of that will actually happen throughout the year as well in 2018. But we have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6 characters. Now, last we had Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the group were taken by an unknown group and sent over into space. And we had the group in... There was some footage shown, I believe it was in New York Comic Con, which I also did a video on, which you can check out. And this group, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., are actually confronted by a monster on this space station, which could be sword... It could be made with the Inhumans Attilan as well. Maybe because it's leading into that. That would be quite an interesting thing. But we have some new characters to feature as well. So let's take a look at who these people are. So our first one is Deke. is the ultimate survivor and roguish scavenger. The guy who can get people what they want but at a price of his asking. With his sharp mind and quick wit, he is both a real asset in a tight spot and a hard man to trust. Next up we have Tess. Tess is resourceful, striving to be self-sufficient in very desperate circumstances, but she has hung on to her hopes for a better future for herself and those closest to her. She is living proof that even in the toughest of times, good people will still fight for each other. Next up we have Flint, who is a young man who's been forced to grow up fast in a tough environment but hasn't lost his desire to make something of himself. When he crosses path with our S.H.I.E.L.D. team, he just may get the chance to prove that he's capable of big things. Fun fact, Flint is based on a character from Inhumans who has the ability to control rock and stone. So yeah, that could be quite interesting there with Attilan. And lastly, we have Grill. Grill is a gruff taskmaster lording over those under his command with an unforgiving temperament. He has no illusions about the world he lives in and his makes him a man not easily fooled or crossed. Now, a lot of these characters don't actually feature in the comics and the character of Deke looks qu- like we won't probably get the Space Peter Quill lookalike character that we're expecting with Jack Flag, which is, to be honest, a real shame that we're not going to be getting that. But, ho-hum, this looks very, very cool. I'm very excited. Now, what is curious as well is the fact that good old Entertainment Weekly, who had the exclusive on these images, actually mentioned the word sword as well. So, if they've got the exclusive, I can't see them really dropping some major hints towards sword. So, maybe that is a kind of easter egg or a a hint hiding in plain sight sword are the counterpart to shield of course who handle everything over in space but i can't help but think that agent colson who knows everything would have been told about sword before however that is it for this video please drop a like please subscribe and i'll see you soon and goodbye